we are going to graph the base function y equals the square root of x and then apply six transformations one by one to create this transformed version of a square root function. You can see we have a vertical reflection, we have a vertical stretch, a horizontal reflection, a horizontal compression, a horizontal translation left four units, and a vertical translation up five units. But the question says do it one by one or graph each transformation along the way. So we're going to start with the base function. I'm going to put that in pink here. You'll have to know what the base function y equals square root of x is. The x's that teachers pick are 0, 1, 4, and 9 because you can square root each of those numbers. The square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3 which means the base function has a point at 0 comma 0, which is here, 1 comma 1, which is here, 4 comma 2, which is here, and 9 comma 3, which is here. Now you might recognize this. It looks like half a parabola turned on its side. That's the base square root function. Now most teachers are going to ask you to do uh, stretches and compressions first. So what I'm going to do is deal with this vertical stretch by a factor of three. We'll deal with the negative separately because it's a different kind of transformation. A vertical stretch by a factor of three takes each of the y's and multiplies them by three. You're going to get three times taller than you were. So zero times three, well, that's still zero, but one times three gives you three. Two times three gives you six, and three times three gives you nine. Your new points are these x's and these new y's. Zero comma zero, which didn't change because this is a vertical stretch, and so you're tripling the distance that each of these points are away from the x-axis points on the x-axis, so it didn't change. But this one was one high, and now it triples to three high. This one was two high, and we tripled it to six high. We have a point at four comma six. Four comma six. And nine comma nine, that point is triple in height to where nine is. You'll notice that's basically the same curve, except it feels three times taller. It's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Now I'm going to deal with the two that's on the inside of the square root. All the stuff that's underneath the house here in the square root function is horizontal, and this two is a horizontal compression by a factor of two. You're going to get half as wide. Now I know it's weird that a whole number or a number bigger than one here makes it taller, a number bigger than one here actually makes it thinner. That's because this is being applied before you take the square root. So the x's have to only be half as large to compensate. But maybe you just want to see it happen. Each of the x's is going to get divided by two instead of multiplied. You're kind of doing the opposite of what it says because it's a horizontal thing. Zero divided by two is still zero. One divided by two is 0.5. You might want to write that as a half if your teacher likes fractions. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 9 divided by 2 is 9 over 2, or 4.5. So the new transformed points are 0, 0, still hasn't changed, 0, 0.5, 3. 0, 0.5, 3 is here. 2, 6, 2, 6, and 4.5, 9. 4.5,9. I just want to point out that each of the points on the green curve has been squished down so they're only half as far away from the y-axis. You've gotten half as wide, or thinner in this case. Cool, that's the stretches and compressions. We've got so much more to do. We've got a vertical reflection. What does that do? Well, that has the effect of multiplying each of these y values by negative one. Now, I'm not exactly sure how your teacher might want you to write this. Some of them have you showing each of these adding on to the function itself. 
I'm just going to say negative 1 times that y times 3 that we already have. Each of these flips its sign. So 0 stays 0, but 3 becomes negative 3. That's a vertical reflection. 6 becomes negative 6. 9 becomes negative 9. So our new points are the newest x's, comma, the newest y's. 0, comma, 0 still hasn't changed. 0.5, comma, negative 3. 0.5, negative 3. 2, comma, negative 6. 4.5, comma, negative 9. There we go. You'll notice that this curve, which I'm doing in orange, if you can see color, is the same as the blue curve above, but it's been flipped. That's the effect of a vertical reflection. Now we're going to do the horizontal reflection. That takes everything that's on the right of the y-axis and flips it to the left, and things that were on the left go to the right. But the real effect is multiplying each of these by another negative 1. Let's go with negative x minus 2. Wow, you cannot see that at home. Let's go with negative x over 2. Cool. 0 times negative 1 is 0. 0.5 times negative 1 is negative 0.5. 2 is negative 2. That is negative 4.5. The newest transformed points are these newest x's and these newest y's. You'll note we just keep creating new values of x and y, and we're using the newest pair of each to create our new points. 0, comma, 0. Bam. Negative 0. 0.5, comma, negative 3. Negative 0. 0.5, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 6. Negative 4.5, negative 9. There we go. You'll note that this curve that I'm putting in purple is the same as the orange curve, but instead of going down and to the right, it's going down and to the left. Wow. You might also note that the purple is a vertical reflection and horizontal reflection of the original blue, which itself came from green, which itself came from red or pink or whatever. Very nice. Now, uh, let's use red for the next one, I guess, like super red. We've got a horizontal translation left for units. So each of these, I ran out of space, it's too bad for me, means we have to take four away from each of these. We're going to take each of those newest x values and take four away. And again, I know it's weird for horizontal stuff. You're adding 4 inside the function itself, but this x therefore needs to be 4 less to compensate for it before you do the square root. All the horizontal stuff is a little backwards from what you expect, probably. Anyways, left 4. So 0, when you shift it left 4, becomes negative 4. When you shift that left 4, it's negative 4.5. I'm subtracting 4 from each. That one becomes negative 6, and that one becomes negative 8.5. So, these are my newest x's, and these are my newest y's, although those will change later. So I have a point at negative 4, comma, 0. Uh, negative 4.5, comma, negative 3. Mm, negative 6, comma, negative 6. Well, that's a fun one. And negative 8.5, comma, negative 9. Nice. You'll note that this curve that I've put in red is the same as the purple, but it's been shifted four units left. Another shortcut you can take there is you can take each of the points on that most recent curve, the purple one, and move them one, two, three, four to the left. One, two, three, four to the left. Be careful with that one because it's not on one of the grid lines. One, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. Four. Wow, beautiful. Okay, we only got one more left, so let's get it. Here we have a vertical translation up five units. So we take each of these and we add five to it. We're trying to go five higher here. Add five, add five, add five, add five. So my newest x's and my newest y's. Negative 4, comma, positive 5. Bang. Negative 4.5, comma, 2. 
negative 6 comma negative 1. Negative 8.5 comma negative 4. And you'll note that this curve, which I am putting in brown, is the same as the red curve, but it's been shifted up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, that point was off. Oops. Yep, that point was just a little off. I forgot about the extra 0.5 there. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's beautiful. This curve is the transformed version of y equals square root of x, which is this one here. The effects were make it three times taller and half as wide, do a vertical reflection, a horizontal reflection, shift it left four units and up five units. Wow, it's a beautiful thing. Just like you are, my friends. Best of luck.